Hi everybody, this is Nafish. Today we are going to learn how to implement a simplified version of Kalman filter in Jupyter Notebook. So first of all, we need to import NumPy as np, then matplotlib as plt, run it, and then imagine like a sensor, okay? It can be a radar sensor, a camera sensor, or any sensor, and that is doing a measurement. There is a car ahead and it's, it is giving you the range information. So let's say the actual range, which is the true value, or ground truth is let's say 10 meters okay and then the sensor output so measured which the sensor is measuring okay measured range is so you, you know like the sensor output it's going to be a little bit noisy there is some noise in the environment so we have to add some noise here so np dot random dot normal and then in this distribution we're going to get actual range so what we're trying to do here is like trying to introduce some noise into the actual range measurement you know so basically kind of simulating try to simulating the uh, measured range by the sensor okay then the standard deviation let's say 0 0.1 you can use some other number if you want um, and then the number of measurements so we haven't defined the number of measurement here so let's say number of measurement is let's say 100 okay so number of measurements okay and then we can plot it out so plt dot plot and then measured range okay so let's plot it out okay so we got our numbers here let's have some let's plot it with uh, the points highlighting the points okay so this guy okay so remember we have the actual range that is 10 10 meters and then we are adding some noise into that so the sensor is giving you this output okay sometimes it's giving you numbers which is close to 10 sometimes there is some bias into it that is introduced by the deviation or you know the environmental noise we have and this is actual measurement by the sensor and you can see this is a little bit noisy and we are going to use the Kalman filter to smooth out this noise a bit and that is why it is calling it we, we call it a filter but it's going to smoothen out the noise a bit okay so let's get into the implementation part okay so the next step is to we have to define some of the Kalman filter parameters so r is equal to 0 0.01 this is the measurement covariance then we have c which is 0 0.0001 this is uh, process covariance and you can play with these two numbers once you implement the filter and you can see how this is impacting the filter output okay and then we have x is equals to np we are creating some containers here okay np dot zeros and then number of measurements so remember we have 100 measurements and we are going to run a for loop for the filter right so that is why we're just creating some of the parameters and this is just a container okay okay so we have x and i'm going to define what is what okay so then we have t and then x minus and then x is already defined so then let's say p minus and then we have k which is the Kalman filter k okay we don't need this guy let's say Kalman filter k, k, okay. So this is it. So what is x? X is like the current measurement, and x minus that is from a previous or knowledge went measurement. So this is what we are measuring, what we have currently, and this is what we had uh, in a previous measurement. Okay. So we are going to use these pre previous measurements and fit that into the current measurement calculations. Okay. And k is the Kalman filter gain. So let's stick it to the equation. Now, the, uh, when we are going to start the filter, we will not have any private information. Okay. So basically, x is equals to zero. The very first value we do not know where to start from. So we are just initializing or guessing some numbers here. Okay. You can use some other values as well, but it's going to very soon catch up with the real numbers. Okay. So let's say the very first value, what we are going to guess. For this range estimation is zero although you know like we are starting from zero but for the filter initialization let's say it's from zero okay. and uh, then we have the 
error term p which is the error covariance that is one okay so p is the measurement of the error and x is the measurement of the um of the range but we have two x's one is x which is the current measurement one is x which is what we, uh, what is x minus which is the measurement we did some previous time okay and p and p minus is one is the current error term and one is the p minus which is something we calculated in some previous time okay so this is the this is what we are going to define the filter initializing the filter right here and basically these are all containers here right so we are going to run a for loop as i mentioned so for i in range we are going to start from value one and then number of measurements okay and then we are going to implement the filter right here so first how we are going to get x minus x minus which is this guy i is equals to x and then the value the previous value okay one minus one so just imagine like we had started from one right so one minus one is zero so x zero is zero so since we do not have any prior knowledge at the very first first iteration we just do not know any knowledge so the first value is going to be zero but later on we are going to feed in the values okay so this is x minus and then we need to have p minus which is the error term as i mentioned so p minus is equals to p the prior value in time um, p minus one and then we are going to add the term c with it the process covariance. so this is going to add up every time in every iteration okay now so these are the two information you know kind of we are going to use for the current um, calculation which is x is first let's calculate the gain so k gain i is equals to we have p minus i and then that is going to be divided by p minus i and then plus the measurement variance remember the measurement covariance so the total error term we are going to divide the term every time by this uh, measurement covariance okay so the variance we see in every measurement okay how that is going to differ that term is going to be um, divided and that's how we're going to formulate the Kalman filter again okay and the next term is x i is equals to we have the x minus so right here the the information we had some previous time in the previous time okay then we're going to use the Kalman gain k gain and that's going to be um, multiplied by our original signal which is we don't know what we named it the measured range okay so we have the major range we have the major range right here and then we're going to um, subtract the x minus so whatever we we know uh, in the previous measurement we are going to subtract that in the current measurement and then th this is what we are going to get from the field okay so then the whole term i think it's going to be yeah this seems good let's use uh, just round bracket right here okay and then we have to calculate the error term which is pi is equals to x um so it's going to be i think one minus k gain yes one minus k gain and then the, the, this term is going to be divided by the p minus i don't think it's going to be a division it's going to be multiplication so let's multiply that by p minus okay so this is the error we see over time okay so we have everything to run the loop right let's run the loop We're able to run the loop and let's see i think there is some error here okay i think i missed a i right here okay the p minus and then let's see okay seems like we are all set Let, then plot it out so plt plot so we have x which is the current state or the filter output plot the filter out okay and we can also plot the noisy output plt dot 
measured measured range range okay plt i think it's going to be plt dot plot and then the measured range okay let's plot that out as well okay um you can see like you know how noisy this is and how we are going to we are smoothing out this maybe we can just do the axis plot here so axis is let's say we're not going to change the x-axis uh, let's say 0 to 100 so 0 to 100 but the y-axis let's put it plot it from 8 to 10 okay so let's say 8 to 11 okay so in that way we can just zoom it a bit okay so plt dot axis oh i think we are missing commas right here okay okay let's run it okay so here it is so you can see how noisy this signal is and how the kalman filter is kind of you know holding it around the original or actual measurement which is 10 okay so this is the significance of the common filter let's use increase the noise a bit and see how it goes so let's say we increase the values here so let's say it's 0.1 okay and then also we increase the noise here let's say it's uh, 5 okay and then run everything and here it is you see how the noise is increased here okay but the Kalman filter is kind of very much steady around the ground truth which is 10 meters okay and you can also plot the error term which is p so plt dot plot and then p and you see we are starting at one right we are starting at one initially using the filter at one but it just settled down very quickly around zero okay the error is kind of very quickly like within like three four samples it's going to um, be at near about zero Okay, so this is the significance of the common filter. You know, you can play with uh, this. You can just change all these um, measurement covariance, process covariance, and try to see how that is impacting the output. But this is the like primary um, explanation I would like to mention. You know, like we have some very noisy signal, very noisy measurement out coming from the environment, kind coming from any sensor. And once you implement the common filter, it is going to smooth out the signal a bit you know it's not just not going to give you a random number or which is very off for example like this point the range the sensor is saying that the object is around nine meters however in truth that is around 10 meters that's why this is kind of smooths out the noise from the environment okay hope you guys have enjoyed it